students feel like they're playing a video game, but they're really learning about career pathways. We really honed in on um, pushing a career pathways narrative that every every student, but but every individual in general, um, needs to have a pathway. Um, you know, certainly for students, that may be uh, co a college path or a military path or a career ready path, uh, and then the same for adults um, who may be unemployed or underemployed, um, making sure that they've got a pathway to success. Um, to be a, a contributing member of society and be able to provide for their family, et cetera. So everything we're doing really revolves around uh, that narrative. Obviously, so much of what we do is what I say, hand-to-hand -hand combat. It's very personal. It's, it's very um, uh, labor intensive from a, from a working with people being in person. So when COVID hit, that threw everything uh, out the window, but instead of us just stopping what we were doing and, and waiting it out, uh, our team was very innovative in trying to keep the, the ball moving downfield, so to speak, uh, with all of these programs. And so uh, through the use of technology, which obviously is a Horizon Initiative pillar, um, we, uh, we try to reimagine what, what career pathway education and exploration would look like. So with our students, uh, that involved uh, creating um, or reimagining our worlds of work, which is our career expo on steroids, uh, reimagining that from a digital uh, um, perspective and created a gaming system where students feel like they're playing a video game, but they're really learning about career pathways and exposing uh, them to, to jobs and career paths that they just, they don't know anything about. Uh, but if we try to pique their interest from that perspective, we also incorporated, which a lot of chambers are doing, are starting to do on virtual reality technology. Um, and uh, again, that we've slowly this year been able to get back in the classroom uh, so students can be exposed to career opportunities from within the classroom. They don't have to go to a business or industry to, uh, to experience how to build a car or welding or, or healthcare. Um, and then the same thing goes for our adult learners and our adult population that we were trying to help uh, is that we had uh, virtual uh, career fairs and hiring, not just career fairs, but hiring fairs um, for our automotive industry, for our healthcare industry. Uh, just because we were experiencing COVID and all that, we still had a lot of jobs to fill. And uh, we couldn't let the pandemic slow that process down. We just had to reimagine what that looked like. And so I'm, I'm happy to say that um, thinking outside the box and, and utilizing technology, uh, we were able to connect people with new career paths uh, and new opportunities to provide for their family. And, and going forward, hopefully we get out from under this black cloud of, of the pandemic, pandemic sooner rather than later. But we do think a lot of the new technologies that we've incorporated in our programming will continue to use. Um, uh, nothing beats in person, but because we cover such a large geographic area, it's just practical um, from a logistics standpoint to be able to incorporate technology uh, to, to use in the classroom or to help people find uh, new employment opportunities. And so uh, we're proud of that pivot and think it's going to pay dividends uh, in the future, even beyond COVID.